Right, I'm up here on Evasion, uh, the most remote Monroe in Scotland, and it's a lovely sunny evening. We've got loads of time, and I thought I would do a gear video for you all, explaining everything that I take on my map up on my mountain trips. And uh, this is actually the same kit that I will take uh, backpacking in Iceland or in Greenland or the Drakensberg. Um, so the kit that I use um, is pretty consistent, uh, particularly on my summer trips. In the winter I might bring some warmer kit, a warmer sleeping bag for example, um, ice axe and crampons if I'm going on snow, and various other bits and bobs. But most of the time I'm taking all of this gear that you see in front of you with me. Um, so starting with the big stuff, I've got my tent. This is a, a Terra Nova Quasar tent. It's a two-man mountain tent. And uh, actually when I'm on my own now, I, I take the uh, Scarp One, which is uh, actually being lent out to one of the clients back there. Um, so that's a smaller, lighter tent, because this one weighs three and a half kilos, which is quite heavy for a tent. Um, and uh, you can get good storm-worthy one-man tents for one and a half to two kilos, somewhere around there, and various brands make them. Um, because I'm quite tall, I'm six foot four, I do need a, a bit of extra room and that's why I've got the scarp, that, that's better for, for taller people, um, as is sleeping in a two-man. Obviously, this is a palace um, for just one person. Uh, sleeping mat, this is a, um, uh, an Extherm, uh, Neo Air Extherm, really excellent mat. I use this year round, so it's even good on snow, it's got insulative foil uh, in between the baffles, so it's very comfortable, very warm. Weighs about 650 grams, I think, because this is the uh, extra large version. Um, again, because I'm tall. <laughs> I also roll a, a, around a lot in my sleep, so it's, it's good to have that extra width. I've got an X-Bed inflatable pillow, well worth carrying. Um, I tried sleeping with bags of clothes and so on as, as pillows in the past, but an inflatable pillow is a great investment. And the sleeping bag I have here is a RAB Neutrino Endurance 400XL. So that means that it's got 400 grams of down in it. Um, and if it's high performing down, that's about the amount of down that you want uh, in the Northern Hemisphere um, for three season use. So spring through to autumn, it's a pretty warm bag. And often in the summer, I just unzip it and use it as a quilt um, if I'm too warm. So that's, a, that's an excellent choice and, and very versatile. If you've got a lower budget, then a 500 gram bag. So a whatever 500 would mean 500 grams of say a lower level uh, down would, would save you some money for only a small uh, weight increase. Backpack, this is um, a Ether, um, what's, what's the brand again, I, I forget, uh, an Osprey Ether, there we go. Um, so th these, are, these are very popular backpacking packs, lots of pockets. Um, they carry well, but they are pretty heavy, so if you want to save weight, there's lots of better choices out there. Um, but I'm out here so much, I also need a pack that's robust, and having the extra pockets is nice too. In fact, in the moment, in these pockets, I've got mid repellent and sun cream, and I put snacks in there as well in the hip pockets, so that's nice to have. As is a lid with lots of storage space, so I'll put my, um, my day snacks in there and... Um, you know, various bits that I'm going to show you in a second. So it's nice to have all those compartments. It's just a shame that the bag itself weighs, I think, in excess of two and a half kilograms. So it's a pretty heavy backpack. Okay, uh, cook kit. Um, this is an MSR wind burner, much like a jet boil. Um, they're all much of a muchness, these stoves, but self-contained. Uh, cooking system is uh, a really nice thing to have. It, it uses gas pretty efficiently. Um, really, they're just for boiling water, so you can't cook in these, but I have dehydrated food, um, which uh, is actually very good now. I'll go through that in a second. Uh, so all you actually need for those is boiling water, um, and the same if you're making porridge, which I do with powdered milk, again, just boiling water, and of course your hot drinks and, and so on. I've got a big gas canister with me at the moment because I'm leading a group and it's just good to have the extra gas in case somebody runs out. But usually I take a medium canister or I'll refill small canisters with a, a little adapter I've got. I have a million ways of, of lighting the stove, um, obviously lighter here, um, but this is my bag of, of knickknacks and I have um, a fire steel in here. Um, I also have some personal medication in here. Um, yeah, toothbrush and toothpaste, a spoon, earplugs for when it gets really windy, and it was incredibly windy last night, so those did get some use. Uh, I'm a pretty light sleeper, and, and earplugs are a, a great thing to have. Bit of Compede too, um, 
I actually had blisters for the first time just the other day because I'd got soft feet from lockdown, so um, those did get some use. And I've also got some uh, various repair uh, bits for the tents and mats and so on. Um, this mat I did actually puncture once. Uh, you can see just there there's a, a, a taped repair, so it's pretty important if you have an inflatable mat to have a way of repairing it, and most of those mats uh, do have uh, repair kits included. Okay, camera kit. So in here, this is a dry bag, and inside is my Canon 70 to 200 f/4 IS. So that's my telephoto lens in there. Um, my camera, I'm still using a 5DSR as my main stills camera. It's a fantastic high-resolution camera, amazing colours, incredible detail, and it produces just fantastic images in daylight conditions. I'm still very, very happy with it. Um, it has taken a beating over the years. I think I've had this for five or six years now. And uh, yeah, it's got lots of lots of knocks and scrapes on it and um, various parts are starting to fail now, the LCD on top and occasionally I get these weird stripes on, on the back LCD. Uh, but otherwise it's an absolute workhorse and uh, it's done brilliantly for me. Mounted is a 16 to 35 F4. Um, and I've got a polarizer on there too, which actually I only take off if I'm shooting into the sun or if I really need the shutter speed, if there's not much light. Um, so that's just two lenses I've got, a 16 to 35 f4 and a 70 to 200 f4. And that does me for, for pretty much everything. If I need to shoot a focal length that's between those two, so say 50 millimeters, then I'll either crop a 35 millimeter frame or I'll shoot a panorama at 70 millimeters with the telephoto. So uh, those two lenses um, have done a, a brilliant job for me over the years. In fact, although I've changed the versions of these lenses, I've pretty much kept those the same for the last 12 years. Um, and it, it really has uh, done, done a great job. Very occasionally I'll carry a 50 millimeter prime um, to shoot portraits of people and so on. Uh, my tripod is an RRS BH40, uh, BH30 ball head. I do also have the BH40, but I tend to take the BH30 now. Um, and a Gitzo GT1545 traveler model. And this combination is absolutely outstanding. It's very expensive. Um, but worth the money because it's lightweight and incredibly stable. In fact, I use this even though I have more substantial tripods when I'm just going around um, low level locations and so on where weight is less of a consideration. I just really, really love this tripod. It also has an excellent working height, which is a big deal for me. A lot of the lightweight tripods have low working heights and that can be a real problem compositionally. Okay, on to other bits. Um, so, toilet paper and a, uh, a shovel of some kind um, to, to, to dig your hole. It's very important that uh, all that business is, is carried out with a respect to the environment. So um, you do have to carry those things. Uh, a full uh, medical kit. I mean, obviously this isn't going to um, help me if, if somebody has something truly terrible happen to them, but uh, it's got bandages and antiseptics, uh, sling if somebody breaks their arm, that kind of thing. Uh, if somebody's very severely injured, then obviously you, you need to uh, call for help. Um, but this will deal with pretty much everything else. And I have lots of duplicates of um, Compede and, and the kind of plasters, the kind of things that uh, might commonly go wrong on a, on a trip like this. Uh, mobile phone and a big battery pack to charge it. Um, I'm out for five days, so I like to have uh, plenty of charge. This is a heavy pack, but uh, you know what? It, it does the job uh, pretty well. And I actually use my phone for navigation a lot of the time um, because it's just very quick and easy. So um, I do have the, the, the map and compass and the knowledge of how to use them. I'm a qualified mountain leader, um, so very happy navigating on map and compass. And if you come out to somewhere remote like this, it's important that a map and compass is, is a system that you can totally rely on because you cannot rely on mobile phones they, they are simply not reliable enough if your battery fails or you drop the phone or whatever it might be um, so you do need a map and compass and a knowledge of how to use them uh, clothing wise well what am I wearing um, I wear these summer trousers um, these are montane trousers I wear them year-round um, I've gone through various sets of crappy boots I mean these are all expensive pairs. This is a pair by Aku. They all fall apart. I have no idea why. None of them are good enough for me. Um, so that's that's a work in progress. 
Uh, I usually bring a thin pair of gloves with me even in summer. Um, they can be useful for keeping the midges off or if it's just unusually cold, which actually it is this evening. As you can tell because I'm wearing a, a long sleeved merino and I'm wearing a fleece and I'm wearing this uh, synthetic rab top as well. Um, so I always take warm clothes even in the summer. Waterproofs wise, these are very lightweight waterproofs. If I'm expecting rain, then I'll bring something a, a lot more heavyweight, but um, the, these do pretty well. This is uh, Montane lightweight trousers and uh, black diamond, gloriously orange waterproof jacket there. Uh, midge net, which you absolutely have to have in Scotland at this time of year. I've had a nightmare with those um, in past days, but fortunately none about at the moment. Um, I've got a dry bag of spare clothes here, so um, this is uh, a buff, which uh, I probably won't use at all. Um, a merino uh, t-shirt, and a wrapper has just flown out of it. <laughs> um, spare pair of pants, spare pair of socks, and, and that's your lot. So um, limited spare clothes, and uh, I'll wash my kit when I get the chance. Uh, if it's a hot day, go for a swim. Um, and then I can kind of get a, a double wear out of things. Um, but honestly, I don't want to be carrying loads of spare clothes. It's just extra weight that doesn't frankly make too much difference. Rubbish bag, nothing to see there because that's just the food that I've chewed through over the past days. Uh, and then this is my food bag. Um, so for lunches, I've got some cheddar cheese here, pack of wraps and some salami. So that's uh, my lunches every day and then various bits of snacks, so honey roasted peanuts here, or cashews, even better. Um, and then snack bars, uh, snack bars and some Stroop waffles, rather good, because it's Scotland. Tunnock's bar, gotta have those. Uh, and finally, the dehydrated meals. Um, these LYO meals are my absolute favorite. This one I'm saving for the last day, the beef stroganoff, it is absolutely epic. Just add boiling water. Um, so all of that gets chucked into a, a dry bag and I've got my tea and um, some vitamin C drinks and so on there um, if I want a hot drink. Um, yeah, and everything ends up getting stuffed into dry bags and into my rucksack so that if it does rain, I can keep everything dry. And I think finally my hiking poles. So these are extra strong um, carbon fiber hiking poles made by Lecky. Um, I recommend everybody hikes with hiking poles. It's a great way of keeping load off your knees. Great on the downhills, helpful on the uphills and the flat too. They, they just generally help your efficiency. Um, if you do buy them, um, get these flip lock versions, not the twist lock versions, because the, the flip locks are very reliable, the twist locks aren't. Um, I got the extra strong ones because I've broken them over the years, but they're still worth their weight in gold. And uh, that's your lot. So that's everything that I bring with me and um, yeah, just occasionally supplement it with a few luxuries or a few bits of, of warmer kit if it's winter and, uh, and technical kit if, if necessary, like I said, the ice axe and crampons. Um, but the key thing here is I haven't got anything that I don't use. I have really cut down my kit over the years and there's various bits that I could make lighter, but this is a good balance for me between uh, utility and, and durability and price because uh, some of the lightweight kit that I have owned has failed um, and uh, and this this stuff is all pretty reliable which is an important factor for me too. So hopefully that's been helpful um, and uh, if you've got any questions then uh, please just comment below and I'll do my best to answer them. <laughs>